at 8.46. I want to say uh, good morning to Ronan Mullen because we want to talk about Katie Taylor, 18-0, and 0, the unified champ, and uh, in action again. Ronan, this one, um, it's interesting to see kind of the progression in terms of the promotion of Katie Taylor and how she's becoming central to some of the biggest sports broadcasting firms in the world. Uh, just talk to us a little bit about where she is at the moment in the firmament of global boxing stars. No, it's, an, it's a really interesting point because I remember when the zone initially launched as a unknown entity where people were still trying to scramble together what the letters actually came to be pronounced as and she was sort of presented as one of those key totems in the Eddie Hearn sort of marketplace. So he put her forward, he put Anthony Joshua forward. This is when he hadn't built up this stable of stars, which now features the likes of Canelo Alvarez and so on. But in terms of the UK rights, and it's, it's kind of a fascinating sideshow to the whole thing where Eddie Hearn has basically taken his stable to the zone. He had that exclusive rights deal with Sky Sports, but this, like, they're sort of into the throes of it now. But I feel like this is the first major event that could have possibly been a Sky Sports pay per view that is now available exclusively on the zone for the, I think it's the $7.99 price point at the moment. So Katie Taylor is a, a key selling point for Heron in that regard. As, as much as I think Joshua still has some sort of stuff to navigate with his Sky deal, he has one Sky fight remaining and that will be later this month. Katie Taylor will remain in the UK stroke Irish market, one of the key draws. And you can imagine they're kind of banking on a, an Irish subscription surge this weekend to see, to see Katie Taylor. As much as it is a good card and it's back in front of 20,000 fans at Headingley and Leeds, so there's plenty to, plenty in, Pomp and, pomp and circumstance to build the whole thing around. I think from a, from an Irish point of view, it's Katie's show as as it normally is. And before we talk about the the uh, fight itself and, and more about Katie, who else is on the card this weekend? What like uh, so? How how is it working? So Josh Warrington is taking on Maurizio Lara. Josh Warrington be familiar to an Irish audience for beating Carl Frampton in what was a, a hotly billed fight a couple of years ago, and lost a huge upset against Maurizio Lara last time out. So that's kind of the rematches are probably the the driving force of boxing, Jared. You know, like the almost every decade has a, has a rematch that you can hang your hat on. It's obviously not of those proportions, but it, the narrative is inbuilt and that kind of, that's boxing one-on-one -on -one in terms of promotion and that kind of thing. So I think that's the selling point. It's back in Leeds. He's a huge fan favorite there. So the the atmosphere and getting the 20,000 people back in there, I think, you know, it's going to it's gonna make for a great occasion. So that that's a great fight at the top of the card. Conor Ben, who's son of Nigel, is sort of, like, I, I think a lot of people in boxing circles have dismissed him as a bit of a novelty act and a sideshow, but because he came into sort of professional boxing with, without a whole lot of amateur pedigree and as I think was sort of an acceptable like stance on the whole thing that they were trying to build his career off his father's name. But I have to say, he's, he's really impressed me and he's he's kind of built his name in the welterweight division at that level, you know, as his own man. And I think he, this is another step of stone to that end. So he's an, he's another one worth keeping an eye on. So there is like, there are some fights of intrigue on this card, but um, Katie Taylor's you'd have to say, and like, I'm not afraid to tell you when the fights are, are competitive. And to her credit, I think you, if you're looking at the pendulum, you'd have to say most of her fights have been unification fights and difficult fights. The last one against Natasha Jonas was a thriller. She's obviously had those two epic fights with Pursuit and the list goes on. But this, you know, the, this is a logistical fight. She has to, it's a box tick really against a, a mandatory challenger. It's only the third time she's had to fight a mandatory because the um, the politics of boxing, as we've gone over it's plenty of times on the show, the only thing that trumps a mandatory, which are kind of enforced by the governing bodies, is a unification. And Katie Taylor's had so many of those that, you know, she can kind of kick the can down the road in terms of mandatories. But this is one that, she just has to take on and the word is that she wants to, to box this one off and maybe another one before the end of the year and then hopefully by start of next year you're into you know back into the big fight conversation with the likes of an amanda serrano and and such like the trouble sometimes is that it feels like the challenge is the thing that keeps an athlete like katie taylor who has won so much and created so many worlds that it's the challenge that gets her up and gets her excited and that sometimes fights like this can be a bit boring for her. And I don't mean that, like, a, I'm not saying that she's not going to be professional about it, but that actually, that she doesn't always appear as impressive in these fights as she is. Yeah, no, it's a fair point. And, you know, Katie is so used to, at this point, fighting people who, like, if you if you take the presumed fight, for example, it's someone sort of marauding forward and Katie uses sort of her, her back feet, fleet of footness to 
to maybe box off the back foot and that's as so she wins these fights it's the fights where opponents go into her sh- into their shell that she's kind of hasn't looked like spectacular in and i don't think that would be the case this weekend like i think jennifer han is more of a technician than a, than a brawler and she won't be i don't think she'd go into her shell it's not really her way she's more of a technical fighter but to that end you just can't see a route to victory for her like as much as like if you're if you're touching the straws against some of Katie's previous opponents, they had power to bring to the table. In this instance, Jennifer's had one stoppage win in her whole career, so like she's she's reigned as a as a featherweight champion for five years, never actually lost that title in the ring, but has moved up to lightweight in search of a money fight. And Katie Taylor happens to be that, but at 38, you can't really see a path to victory for her. So yeah, I think I think I would expect Katie to actually to win in impressive fashion and maybe maybe stop Jennifer this weekend. So to that end, maybe it will be the the outcome that the zone are looking for. But um, no, in terms of the the broader canvas of Katie Taylor's career, I don't think we'd be looking at this one necessarily down the line. Is Katie Taylor going to earn more money now with gate receipts back in play or have her fees been held up quite nicely over the last little while? I think they've been they've been held up OK. Like she obviously boxed on pay-per-view with that first pursuing fight, which was um, on the Dillian White undercard. So that would have brought in revenue in and of itself. And like what I would say is that she probably is one of those fighters and perhaps it is cliche, but it's certainly true of Warrington who definitely feeds off the, the crowd and, and gets that energy behind them. I think Katie is, is similar in that regard where she probably enjoy having that frenzy back and it might spur her on to have a more uh, like impressive showing. But in terms of her, her earning power, I think she's definitely in the 1% in women's boxing where her um, like the money she brings in would be slightly comparable to her male counterparts. Unfortunately, we can't say the same of of mo- large swathes of, of the women's boxing at the moment. But I think, you know, it's not, it was never going to be an overnight thing. Like women's professional boxing wasn't really anywhere 10 years ago. And I think even in the five years that she's been in the game, like strides have been made in that regard. So hopefully that will continue in, the, in to that end. But um, no, I think, I think money wise, she's, she's in a good place. And I think that's the drawing power, like women's boxing, because the, those boxers are trying to get to the top echelon of the sport, they're willing to fight and, and take challenges. So that's why you see Katie have these sort of so, such interesting fights so often that, you know, people are willing to put their fight their belts on the line for career paydays. And uh, that's probably where Amanda Serrano comes into it, where for a long time it seemed like she, she would need Katie to have that sort of marquee payday, but not quite the case because she she was on the the Jake Paul undercard there last weekend and, and got, a, got a pretty penny for that one. And I think uh, you might have seen that uh, Jake Paul supplemented a good few of the boxers on the card out of his own purse with money. So as much as he's been billed as the, the villain of the fight game at the moment, that was kind of a nice gesture on his part. So is there a bit of conflicted emotion about Jake Paul in the fight game at the moment? Well, Jerry's done the spectacular thing of bringing together the boxing community and the MMA community in despising him. <laughs> you know, in unison, but like, to my eye, I can't really be that passionately against him, honestly. Like, it's, it's boxing's own fault to a certain extent that he's able to fill a vacuum that's there. Do you know, if if the wild or if the fury against Joshua fight had happened, or, you know, if you take the welterweights, for example, and it's not quite the case at the moment because Errol Spence is injured, but the two premier welterweights, Terence Crawford and Errol Spence, who would be on par with you know, the four kings that we speak about, you know, eulogize about back uh, decades past, you know, if those two had gotten the ring twice or three times, like there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be room for Jake Paul to capture the imagination. It would be very much a sideshow, but the reality is Showtime showcased that fight at the weekend. You know, one of the, the main institutions of boxing for, for years, they, it was a proper production. You know, they had the, their main commentary team on it and Ariel Helmani was, was brought in to do the sort of the MMA eye on things. Similarly, over here in this part of the world, Sky Sports have shown these fights. BT Sport showed the most recent one. So, do you know the the, the broadcasters are going to they're going to televise what gets the money. Yeah. And if they're not being offered the top fights, which they should be, then they're gonna like it's just business. Like, uh, and that's the sad reality of it. I can understand. I'm like, I'm not going to put myself in the shoes of of working boxers who like look at these guys and think I've worked my whole life. I've been boxing since I was. You know, it's cool to to make ends meet, and I'm watching this guy rock up and make millions. But like, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, it's it's well, capitalist marketplace, and it, that's just the reality. Isn't it also a bit of a gateway drug, though? If if you were somebody who was not into boxing and suddenly starts watching a fight, and the fight is competitive, Maria, then 
you get used to paying for fights and the boxing community needs to go and say, well, okay, there's now a million YouTubers who are willing to pay whatever the price is, 100 quid, if it is 100 quid, let's get them to get the Fury fight the next time that Fury and Joshua fight, the first time uh, that Fury and Joshua fight each other, but the next time that they fight and that there's, is that not the, is it not a, a bit of a business model for, is Eddie Hearn not looking at this going, right, we need to get those people to buy my next fights? No, that's totally it. And Eddie Hearn was the first one. He, he showed Logan Paul, Jake's brother, against KSI, which was just a YouTuber versus a YouTuber. And that was on the zone. And as you would expect, all the other promoters were sticking the knife in his back, saying, oh, this is what are you doing to boxing? This is a joke. And yeah. you know what's coming. They've all done it since. So, you know, it's like, it's just sort of typical. And to your point, like, the subscribers went way up on the zone. To what extent they remained... I don't know, but like even if, as you said, take one million for example, if one percent of them stay on, that's one percent more than you had before. Yeah, and stick another one on. Just just do one of those fights every six months. Look, we haven't talked about the the other uh, the the future for Kelly Harrington. We haven't kind of teased that out very much. But if 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 somebody offered a three fight deal for a trilogy between Katie Taylor and Kelly Harrington, and the money was right, why would they say no to that? As in the fighters themselves? Uh, yeah, why, why would anybody say no to that? Why would anybody think that that's a, actually a bad idea for them? Let's assume that, that. They, let's assume that they split the first two, right? You know, like, you know, obviously, the, there's a, a de- it's a two-fight deal, but there's an option for a third. Yeah, like, it's a difficult one. Kelly would need a year, I would say, at least to attune to the pro game. You know, it is, it's, it's a different ball game, really. But, you know, I think if Katie is in for the long haul and she's spoken about boxing until she's 40... I would be shocked and you know as Kelly has said on the record that she's been offered deals by promoters and the way it used to be that maybe she has you know with Paris only three years away she's probably thinking of becoming a, a double Olympic medalist and it's well within her capability but as we've seen professional boxers at the moment as things stand are allowed to compete in the Olympic Games so if she wanted to balance the two as you said and have professional fights in, in the interim she's comfortable to do that if that's the path she wants to go down I think you know the whole thing of would they box each other? Like, they absolutely would box each other. 100%. Like, I think if the, if the money's right, as you said, and if if the, if the it's made palatable in terms of, like, where it takes place, like, in an ideal world, and we don't need to get into why it hasn't happened of yet, but, like, Katie Taylor hasn't boxed in Ireland yet, which is ridiculous. And, you know, she's boxed all over the world. And probably the only things left on her bucket list at this stage are Las Vegas and a homecoming fight. And hopefully one of those would happen. But... I think, yeah, if if they, if they can put something together, I think that can definitely happen. It's just up to Kelly at this point whether she wants to make that step. She's only 31. I think Katie turned pro at 30, so time is very much on her side. And, and Kelly Harrington would 100% win a world title as a professional if that's the path she wants to go down. So it's interesting times. I think it's, um, like, to, to what extent we want to entwine their, their accomplishments. I don't know. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with it. Like, when questions are put to each about about each other, I don't really... Like as much as it's a, it's an interesting sort of parallel and probably just good symmetry to the fact that Kelly now reigns in a division in Olympic terms that Katie was once yeah. in. They've like they've achieved what they've achieved independent of one another. You know, if they, totally, if they come together, totally. if they come together, it's a, both it's amazing a, careers up to this point. But there is also the possibility of them both making a, a whack of cash. Yeah, and on but a, the reason yeah the reason it would be a brilliant fight is because it's two fantastic. Like individuals coming together and fighting and obviously you've got the the Irish background behind that but I think um, you know I think that's more the selling point of it and you know I think people were maybe at the time when it was first being mooted thinking it would be or maybe a little bit uncomfortable to have like who would you root for I just think it would be a yeah. spectacular sporting occasion if it did happen but I think at this point it's still very much an if I'd root for the purse to be huge that's what I would root for so that they can both get rich out of it Ronan great stuff thanks a million cheers cheers Jer Ronan Mullen giving us some thoughts on what's going to happen this